Aloha. Aloha, aloha again. Okay, you all. I started over. <laughs> I didn't have my good mic and it just threw me completely off. And also, let me adjust here. And also, we need to address pressure. <laughs> so, I'm going to drop into my heart and I invite you to do the same. And take a deep breath. And exhale out your heart. Letting go of any pressure. <sighs> so I'm calling in my guides and I feel I feel Pleiadian light bringing peace. They always come in and say we bring peace. They really know what I need. <laughs> We bring peace. So, I was just waiting for that truck to pass by. So first and foremost, drop into your heart and feel peace. This peace is the feeling that you receive when you connect with all time and all space. My mind went to, well, if there's no time, then what about space this morning? <laughs> and it wasn't addressed and it might not be today. So I would love to wish aloha to all of you who are here. And if you have any questions arise, my guides are very clear that they're open to that right now. Um, and they also want to discuss pressure because it is a very big theme in my heart right now. <laughs> so what is pressure? One, it is not helpful. It's stress. It stresses the body. It, it compresses the cells. It compresses it compresses our light body into even a denser reality than we actually are in. <laughs> so, while pressure can create diamonds, it isn't necessary for a human to pressurize themselves into a lot of suffering in order to create that diamond because within our souls, within our hearts and within our bodies, that's, that's the reality of us. So we already are diamonds and it doesn't take the force of pressure that we put upon ourselves in the form of the mental constructs and the judgments to create a diamond that we already are. <laughs> Does this make sense? So if you have questions, let me know. If you can comment, let me know where you're from as well. It's, it's fun to see that. So I've been feeling 
pressure on myself because I have a vision. And it's causing so much pressure that even in this moment, I would like to cry. (laughs) So this is as vulnerable as I will be probably, but I have recently, um, I've recently been reminded about how happy I was and I've been at my happiest, happiest, happiest times. I was not hiding anything. Nothing. I wasn't hiding anything from anybody. When I got divorced in 2011, I didn't hide that. When I, and I didn't hide the reasons that I perceived to be the reasons. I didn't hide, I, I, I decided that my wholeness and that my freedom were more important to me than others' perceptions of me. So I didn't hide. I started a blog and I started to blog about my journey moving across the country um, and just about the lessons that I was learning and about lessons that I had learned and just about experiences that I went through. I might not have included the part where a police officer pulled me over in Walla Walla because um, I was speeding (laughs) because I needed to get gas because I was almost out of gas. So I was almost out of gas and I was in Walla Walla and my GPS, I had, oh, what was it called? A Garmin because it was before I think I didn't even, I didn't have a smartphone when I moved out there in 2011. I know, I know I could have, my parents did, but did I know? But I still have an iPhone 6 right now too. So this is just the way I am. I don't necessarily need the newest things all the time. But I was driving out to my new home in Ashton, Oregon. And I was driving through, uh, Washington. Walla Walla is in Washington, right? I think so. (laughs) And I needed gas, so I left the road and I drove along and my Garmin wasn't really working because the roads were new. So I was just like, I don't know, I gotta find gas. All of a sudden, I see lights behind me apparently. I don't really remember. It's a blur, right? And I'm just like, oh, crap. And this was the point in my life when I was very, very afraid of any authority. Any. Anytime I'd see a cop, I never sped. I, I, I wasn't a speeder. I'd, I would freak out. Like, oh, no, I'm going to be in trouble. Um, but it turns out he comes up to my car. It was just packed full of my crap because I'm moving. And I had it packed to the brim. And he asked what I was doing. I said, I just need to find a gas station. And this thing isn't showing me the right roads because these roads are new. I mean, I didn't know that, but it was obvious. And um, if you have questions, please let me know because I will talk about little stories forever. But he's, he said, okay, well, and then he went back to his car, you know, and I'm sitting there waiting like, okay, I wonder how much this is going to cost me because it's not like I have a ton of money right now. And he comes back and he said, I made a deal with myself. And I made a deal with myself and it was that if I pulled somebody over and they'd never gotten a ticket, I wasn't going to give them their first ticket. And I looked at your history and you haven't gotten any tickets, so you're off with a warning. But really, you need to pay attention. This is why people get into accidents, because people aren't paying attention. Now I know the point of the story. <laughs> So I got off with a nothing, with a, I got off with a warning, uh, with, a, with a life lesson that I didn't have to pay for, which I was very grateful for at that moment because I didn't have that much money. <laughs> so 
I wanted to talk about pressure and now I'm talking about paying attention. But actually, if you're paying very close attention, you're going to know if you're causing pressure on yourself and you don't need to because you're already a diamond, okay? And there are different kinds of pressure. But the kind of pressure we're talking about today is the kind of pressure that makes your heart go like this. The heart go like this. It makes the heart, I just realized this might become a podcast, so it makes the expansive heart compress into itself. It doesn't have to do that because the diamond's already there. It doesn't have to do that to create the diamond that we already are. We are all diamonds right now how we are. So if you're causing pressure on yourself, what is that coming from? What kind of pressure are you applying to yourself? And does it really need to be there? Okay. There is a, there is a belief in humanity, and we all know this, but they're saying it anyways, that in order to become a good person, or in order to become quote unquote successful, there has to be a type of initiation where there is suffering. And this is not true. You can have the you can have a life where you are a good person, even if you were not pressured by trauma, even if you didn't fall into an addiction, even if everything comes to you easily, you can still be a good person. You don't have to have the experience of hardship and struggle to be a good person. So pay attention to your own thoughts and energy and realize if you've made this assumption into an agreement with yourself that because you haven't had as much hardship as somebody else, you aren't able to rise to the height as that person. Or because you haven't had the trauma of somebody else, you can't be as good of a person because you don't have that particular experience in in this life and therefore you can't get as high there's this strange perception of needing to have a compelling story and that compelling story has to include hardship trauma struggle unbearable grief that I've been able to overcome this and that makes me some somebody great. Now, that is not incorrect. If you've overcome hardship and struggle, of course you are great. And and it's commendable. However, it doesn't there aren't pedestals where if you've been this low, that means you can get this high. But if you've only been this low, it means you can only get this high. They're not directly proportional. It is always the intention in the heart. And there aren't pedestals at all whatsoever. Anyhow, because there's not a hierarchy of soul. All souls are literally one and the same. All souls... All souls are thus uh, the <laughs> the soul. So 
if you are like me and think, gosh, I haven't been through the trauma that other people have been through, therefore I shouldn't, I shouldn't come into my full expression of radiance because I, I mean, it's easier. It is not easier. It is not easier. And this lifetime is one, one out of millions and billions. And there is no time and all are happening subsequently. So if you are having an easy time in this life, that doesn't mean that you're having a harder time at the same time in another timeline or, or dimension or alternate reality that's actually happening, happening now. The same soul is having these experiences Aloha, Kathy. I, I hope this is making sense to you because I have, to be honest with you, I'm not sure I'm catching it all. I might have to go back and listen to this <laughs> again. But it's talking about how human humans have this idea that to be great, you have to struggle. And it's not true. And it moved into how souls are not like it's almost like we have this pedestal type thing where if you've been this low you can get this high but if you've only been this low you can only get this high and there's not even a pedestal because all souls are one and then all souls are operating not only as this being that you are right now but also within other timelines and realities and dimensions all right now so past lives are actually right now future lives are also right now think of it this way you have uh, an inner child right so your inner child if you go back and heal your inner child which is simply the um, the impressions the projections the experiences of what happened to you as a child and speaking of trauma it doesn't even have to be something that you feel would be traumatic right now in your life could have caused a great deal of trauma to the child aspect of you and you continue to hold this and so while you don't see that trauma as trauma your subconscious might actually be holding a great deal of trauma greater than what you perceive somebody else to be experiencing or to have experienced the the adult mind your mind now will look and see other people who have suffered horrible traumas and think wow that is horrible that is deep that is heavy that is a huge trauma it may be true but that doesn't discount or make the trauma that you felt as a child no matter what kind of trauma that was and it doesn't have to be the kind of trauma that you would see now as traumatic does this make sense so you're still pulling that trauma with you so to heal it you heal the inner child you go in and you love the inner child you heal the inner child and that affects your now and that affects your future because all is right now on the same plane you can go forward and tune in and tap in to your future self i like to think of it as the crone because i'm a woman and that's you know the crone is is the woman or the wise man or whatever the wisdom that you're <laughs> gaining throughout all time lines you can tap into it's really amazing actually and channeling is doing that the aspects of my soul that are in other dimensions and in other races not earthly races but actual beings out there the pleiades uh, or the pleiadians the arcturians um you know not only star beings but other 
Lemurians, you know, things, beings like that, wherever my soul has a piece of itself, I can tune into, and so can you. It's a matter of practice, and it's a matter of wiring, and it's just a matter of dropping into the heart and being open to knowing that your own mind doesn't have to actually come up with everything on its own, that you can tap into a much greater aspect of yourself. The archangels. I, I love this. <laughs> Archangel Michael, people call on Archangel Michael all the time. I do too. I have, uh, my friend Lolly makes oils, um, Archangel oils, and I have Archangel Michael oil on right now. It is not like some being comes to you. You are calling on the aspect of yourself which resonates at that frequency and that vibration and that level. So when we call on Goddess Lakshmi, we are not calling on some outside force to come and bring us all the abundance. We are calling on the goddess Lakshmi aspect of ourself to rise up and shower everything, ourselves and others, with this abundance and beauty and harmony. Let's not be too shallow. She's not only money. <laughs> she is but she is the she is the vibration. She's a vibratory rate of ecstasy and joy and gratitude that allows the abundance to absolutely flow from her and from us to us through us from us. Did I lose my place? <laughs> I was talking about pressure, and then I got off on some other tangent. Pressure. So to release pressure, if you're pressuring yourself, one, know that it is not a prerequisite to becoming the diamond that you already are. So if you are purposefully or not purposefully applying pressure in your judgments of self, in your thoughts. Notice it, become aware. This is where my story about getting pulled over, you've got to pay attention. <laughs> pay attention to what's going on. Be perceptive. And then it's almost as if with the perception of the pressure, the pressure can release a bit. And you can breathe a little bit easier. And the heart, instead of squishing in, can expand again. And here, and here, and here we circle back to Lakshmi. Then the abundance can flow. The abundance of love, the abundance of pleasure, the abundance of money, the abundance of joy, the abundance of life, of life. All is well. All is all is whole, and you are as whole as all parts of the whole, which are the whole. <laughs> this reminds me of one of the verses from the, um, I believe, Upanishads. Like, this, that is, this is full, that is full. From fullness, fullness comes. When you take fullness from fullness, fullness still remains. It's that, it's this connection that all really is full and there's no, there is no non-full. So this one got a little over my head, <laughs> um, but I believe that it is just important to, again, just pay attention. Pay attention and re really just remember that you have access to a lot more knowledge than you think. And as long as you don't think, it can be accessed. So that means drop into the heart and allow the rest of your consciousness to send you its messages. 
that's what channeling is. It looks different for everybody. Some people trance out and some people write. I write, that's how I mostly do, but then today and, and on these live channelings, um, I speak and I had to make notes so I don't forget things, but I do do personal readings. Um, so if you are have a question, nobody asked questions today, but we've had questions in the past. But if you do have a question or, or a topic that you're unsure about and you're not receiving your own guidance, uh, I can tune in to that for you. And I like to write. It comes out really clear and then I send that to you. I can also do a three card um, reading with animal spirit cards. They, I love animals more than anything. And then you have a recording of my voice as I go through the card reading, plus I then channel writing for you. Um, so that just adds depth to the topic and question at hand. If you're interested or need some of that, let me know. Uh, and then I have amazing, then I have to, um, I have to just, de just, just a second. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank okay. So let the planes want to finish. So thank you for shining. Thank you for being the diamond that you are. Please continue to love yourself up. Please do not be shy to call upon the Pleiadians and the peace that they bring through. They bring peace. <sighs> and I believe they use that term with me because it's stronger for me than love. I know, I, I already feel the love. And for me, it's important to find, to feel the peace as well because I put pressure on myself and I yeah so they they are they want to remind you that you are a diamond if you need reminding call upon their peace and be with the peace and be with yourself and be with the love that you are you are bright and beautiful and amazing and powerful you're more powerful than you think and we love you so very much and admire the work that we are we as humans that you are all doing so thank you so thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you guides angels and pleiadians you, you're awesome um so now i uh, have a couple of things coming up that i just wanted to let you know we have a a class tomorrow in wild radiance sisterhood so what is that Wild Radiant Sisterhood is the place to go if you've ever felt like you've lost yourself to the shoulds of society or to, you know, to this, this kind of human conditioning and we lose our souls, especially as women. So yes, it's a sisterhood and it is all women in there. Uh, anyone identifying as female. And, and we have um, activities, <laughs> activities, that's a weird word. But we have classes and we have ways of connecting back in with our soul and really honoring its energy, its light, its diamond essence. And tomorrow we have a class uh, which is going to be about removing fear of the future. So I mentioned in a read, I think in a reading a couple of times ago, or else I think it was last week when I did the three card reading for the collective. July is a fairly level month and then it's going to get ugly. So why don't we remove fear of the future now so that as things happen in the future and the tumult continues as it will, um, we have, we're already, we're already in the space of no fear. Beautiful, right? And then the new moon is, I believe, on the 20th. It may be the 21st, depending on where you are in the world. Um, but the class is the, the new moon master class will be on the 21st. And that is in the sisterhood as well. However, all are welcome. So if you 
want to try something out before jumping in, the Sisterhood is $25 a month. Um, the New Moon Masterclass is $20, but if you want to try that out and you're like, oh, wow, I want in, you get the $20 off your first month anyway, so it works out. And then you get those all sister, you know, all soul sisters, all members of that, um, receive all of the New Moon Masterclasses for free as well. So it's really magical. It's a really magical space. Um, you're welcome to that. And the new moon masterclass is going to be a lighted house. It is another new moon in Cancer. Cancer is the, the soul, like the soul message or the soul phrase of Cancer is, I build a lighted house and therein dwell. And so as we move into some more craziness, <laughs> We are going to build ourselves as a lighted house and dwell within and shine out. And that is what the masterclass theme is this month. And again, that's on the 21st, which I think is next Saturday. No, it's next Tuesday, I think. Yeah, next Tuesday, or I guess not next Tuesday, but the following. <laughs> so those are my announcements. I've got to really ground. <laughs> If you have any questions, know that I'm here just about every week unless something from the sisterhood overrides because I do healings in there and I do, um, and, and I use the moon. So uh, if Friday falls on a quarter moon or a new moon or a full moon, this live channeling will be overridden, but I am here each week and every time it's different. Um, but yeah, I'm really grateful for all of you here live or replay and I hope to see you again. Thank you, Kathy. I'll say aloha to you and all of you, Satnam.